SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has shared a two-month timeline for the Starship rocket's next and equally highly anticipated test flight. The extent of the damage to the pad during the first test flight in April created speculation that perhaps SpaceX would take a considerable amount of time to rebuild it. However, Musk quickly stated that the next launch attempt would occur in just a few months. According to his latest tweets, Musk appears to be sticking to what he said in April. As per the current timeline, SpaceX will rebuild the launch pad in a month and then test its rockets on the pad for a similar time period before attempting to reach orbit. The FAA launched a mishap investigation immediately after Starship's first test mission, grounding the program until a conclusion is reached and the public safety concerns are addressed. Also, in May, several environmental groups sued the FAA claiming the agency didn't thoroughly analyze the environmental damage Starship could cause to sensitive lands before granting a launch license. These made many believe that the Starship program could suffer further setbacks. While the result of the FAA investigation and the lawsuit verdict are still pending, SpaceX has moved quickly to repair the pad damage and install water-cooled steel plates and deluge system under the launch mount to avoid damage during future missions. As per Musk's estimate, the steel plate installation would be completed by the end of this month. In an earlier filing with the FCC requesting permission to communicate with the Starship rocket during Starship's second test flight, SpaceX hinted at a launch attempt after June 15. Musk's latest tweet hints the timeline has been pushed back by a month, and if all goes according to plan, we could see the Starship flying again in late July. SpaceX has officially announced that they will launch Starship 25 and Super Heavy Booster 9 for the second test flight. The mission profile will be similar to the first test flight. After lifting off from Starbase, Booster 9 will separate approximately 170 seconds into the flight and will then perform a return and land in the Gulf of Mexico, approximately 30 kilometers from the shore. Ship 25 will continue flying between the Florida Straits, nearly reaching orbital velocity, before splashing down approximately 100 kilometers off the northwest coast of Kauai. Ship 25 is now at the launch site and awaiting a six-engine static fire test. Once Stage 0 is completely ready, Booster 9 will be rolled out to the launch site to begin pre-launch tests. Several cryo-proof and static fire tests will be conducted initially, followed by full-stack integration of Ship 25 for wet dress rehearsal, and finally the launch. A few days ago, an unusual stainless steel ring section was spotted at Starbase. The ring features multiple cutouts that form six arches. They continue around the hull, but not all are punched out. According to product designer and 3D artist Tony S., this could be the booster ring section above the forward dome. To understand the purpose of these cutouts, you need to know what hot staging is. Due to microgravity, the cryogenic liquids inside the upper stage propellant tanks of a rocket will be in a slushy state of liquid and gas when the rocket is coasting. If the ullage gas is sucked into the engines in this mixed state, it will displace useful propellant, reducing efficiency and potentially damaging the engines. To prevent ullage gas from mixing with the propellant and entering the engine's combustion chamber, some rockets utilize ullage motors. They are relatively small and independently fueled rocket engines that will be ignited in a zero-g situation to accelerate the rocket before the main engine ignition. The resulting acceleration causes the liquid in the rocket's main tanks to settle towards the aft end, ensuring uninterrupted flow to the fuel and oxidizer pumps. Some rockets, such as the Russian Proton rocket, utilize a different technique to prevent ullage gas from entering the combustion chamber. Moments before stage separation, Proton ignites its second stage engines while the first stage is still pushing it. This will avoid the coasting phase during stage separation and eliminate the tank ullage issues. This process, called hot staging, avoids the need for ullage motors on the second stage. But hot staging necessitates a special open truss work in the interstage area to prevent the second stage exhaust from blowing up the first stage. The holes on the steel section spotted at the Starbase look similar to the truss work in the interstage of proton rockets. Since Starships employs an autogenous pressurization system, they do not need hot staging to avoid ullage issues. However, hot staging would allow the ship to quickly escape the booster before stage separation, in case the booster has malfunctioned. So the hot staging technique in Starships would function much like a launch escape system, which would eliminate risks during crewed missions. It has to be noted that these are just speculations and have not yet been confirmed by SpaceX or Elon Musk. In my previous video, I mentioned that parts of the Starship lunar lander were spotted at the Starbase production site. The components spotted were a dome section painted white, the elevator assembly, and the support floor for the crew compartment. It looks like the floor of the crew compartment is intended to be placed on top of the dome, and the elevator used to transfer astronauts to the lunar surface is supposed to be installed on top of the floor of the crew compartment. 
Recently the white dome was installed inside a nose cone section previously meant for Starship 22. It's currently unclear whether the parts spotted are for a fully operational lunar Starship or a full-scale mock-up. Please check out these tweets from the Ring Watchers and the Space Engineer to learn more about the Lunar Starship components spotted at Starbase. Links in the description. In order to keep up the current production pace, SpaceX is reconfiguring the production site by removing old buildings and building new ones. Teams have begun demolishing the old production building and the ground fabrication building. The low bay was completely knocked down on Monday, May 28 to make way for new facilities to be built in the area. Shortly, all the old buildings of the production site will be replaced by the Star Factory, which is currently under construction. The long production tents are also set to be demolished, allowing the Star Factory to expand its footprint. This video will give you an idea of how the Star Factory will be constructed. A new mega bay is under construction north of the existing mega bay, and its sections are being prefabricated at the Sanchez site. The first level framework is complete, and teams have begun moving the pre-assembled second level segments toward the site for installation. SpaceX recently erected a new crane at the production site to lift and install the new Mega Bay sections. Super Heavy Booster 10 was moved to the Rocket Garden from the Mega Bay on May 27. Once the booster cryo station at the Massey's test site is complete, Booster 10 will be subjected to cryo-proof tests there. Piling works continue at the launch site to build a foundation for the water-cooled steel plates that will be installed very soon. The Starship Quick Disconnect mechanism and the flex hoses from the booster Quick Disconnect were removed recently. It looks like SpaceX is planning to refurbish and upgrade both the booster and Starship Quick Disconnect mechanisms before the next integrated test flight. Foundation work for the new horizontal propellant storage tanks continues near the tank farm. On June 2, a horizontal tank arrived in the port of Brownsville on a barge. Two more horizontal tanks are on their way to the starbase by road. The tanks will replace the vertical storage tanks at the launch site. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. The first crewed launch of Boeing's Starliner spacecraft has been delayed yet again after the company found new problems with the vessel. The Starliner crew flight test was most recently scheduled for July 21 and was set to carry two NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. Recent testing and analyses during the final certification of the Starliner spacecraft's parachute system found that soft links on lines connecting the three main parachutes with the capsule are not as durable as anticipated. While it was not an issue during the two uncrewed Starliner test flights in 2019 and 2022, it is possible that the soft linkages could break under heavier stresses, such as if one of the spacecraft's three main chutes does not fully deploy. The other problem that got the attention of Boeing and NASA involves a type of tape called P213 used to protect wiring harnesses throughout the vehicle. Boeing found that the adhesive on the tape is flammable under certain circumstances. According to Boeing, technicians will have to fix the parachute issue and also apply another layer of safety material around the flammable tape before certifying Starliner for flight. The Starliner fueling procedures for the crew flight test was supposed to start in mid-June, but currently Boeing has put those preparations on hold. It's currently unclear when the flight test will occur. Boeing's Starliner program is already running years behind schedule after a series of issues with the software, valves, and other parts of the spacecraft. The newly discovered technical problems, which escaped detection for years, dealt another setback for the company. The second private mission to the International Space Station came to a close as the Axiom Mission 2 astronauts returned to Earth on Tuesday, May 30. The four-person AX-2 crew was launched from Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A on May 21 aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The AX-2 astronauts included former NASA astronaut and commander Peggy Whitson, pilot John Schaffner, and mission specialists Ali al Karni and Rihanna Barnawi from Saudi Arabia. All four astronauts, along with the Expedition 69 crew, performed more than 20 scientific experiments during their eight days aboard the orbiting laboratory and conducted various outreach and education activities. The crew Dragon Freedom, carrying the AX-2 astronauts and more than 135 kilograms of return material and data, undocked from the ISS on Tuesday and began its journey back to Earth. About 12 hours after undocking from the station, the Dragon capsule made a fiery plunge back through Earth's atmosphere to splash down in the Gulf of Mexico, bringing an end to the eight-day-long AX-2 mission. The recovery team quickly got the spacecraft on a SpaceX vessel and helped the four-person crew out. The astronauts were later flown to Houston via helicopter. As the name suggests, AX-2 was the second mission that Axiom Space has flown to the ISS. The first, AX-1, sent four people on a SpaceX Dragon in April 2022. 
Axiom plans a third private astronaut mission to the space station late this year, commanded by Michael Lopez Alegria, the former NASA astronaut who also commanded the AX-1 mission last year. The crew members for the mission will be disclosed in the coming months. NASA and SpaceX are targeting Saturday, June 3 to launch the company's 28th Commercial Resupply Services mission to the International Space Station, dubbed CRS-28. SpaceX's Cargo Dragon capsule will deliver new science investigations, food, supplies, and equipment for the international crew. Far Davis, an investigation from the European Space Agency, will observe thunderstorms from the space station. This vantage point allows researchers to see the electrical activity from above. Plant Habitat 03, an investigation led by the University of Florida, will study the epigenetic change in plants grown in space. Genes in Space 10 tests a technique for measuring telomere length and microgravity. Telomeres, genetic structures that protect our chromosomes, shorten with age and wear. But research has shown that they lengthen in space. Understanding the mechanism behind telomere lengthening could reveal possible effects on astronaut health during long-term missions. CRS-28 will also carry several Nanorax CubeSats and the next pair of International Space Station rollout solar arrays, also known as iRoses. Each new iRosa will produce more than 20 kilowatts of electricity, and once all are installed, they will enable a 30% increase in power production over the station's current arrays. The Cargo Dragon capsule will arrive at the station on June 5 and dock autonomously at the station's zenith port of the Harmony module. The spacecraft is expected to spend about a month attached to the orbiting outpost before it returns to Earth with research and return cargo. China launched its crewed Shenzhou-16 mission to the Jiangong Space Station atop a Long March 2F rocket on May 30, marking the country's 11th human spaceflight mission and the fifth to Jiangong. The three-person crew was commanded by Jing Haiping, embarking on his fourth visit to space, with Zhu Yangzhu serving as the mission's engineer and Gi Haichao serving as the payload specialist. The mission marks the first flight of the second-generation Shenzhou spacecraft, which sports several technical improvements over the first capsule. These improvements include fewer imported parts and improved control mechanisms that make it easier for the crew to operate the spacecraft. Nearly seven hours after liftoff, the Shenzhou-16 spacecraft completed automated rendezvous and docking with Jiangong while orbiting at an altitude of 425 kilometers. Two hours later, the hatches were opened, and the Shenzhou-16 astronauts entered the orbiting lab and joined the three-member Shenzhou-15 crew, who will return to Earth on June 3. During their six-month-long mission, the Shenzhou-16 astronauts will conduct various on-orbit tests and experiments in multiple fields. They will also perform spacewalks to carry out maintenance of the station. China aims to keep Jiangong constantly occupied and operational in orbit for at least 10 years. The country is also looking to expand the space station with a multifunctional module to enhance its capacity. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.